Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the hardest game of Civ 6 the world has ever seen. For you see, I had a brilliant idea. What if the apocalypse mode of Civ 6 was an actual apocalypse? The fundamental issue with the Civ 6 DLC that adds the apocalypse is that, well, it doesn't. Sure, you might lose some coastal tiles to flooding and the occasional comet might evaporate a city, but that's not really an apocalypse. So today I dialed the game up to 11 and yeeted all of the balance out the window. The entire map will now be able to flood and sink into the ocean like Atlantis. Wildfires will be burning constantly, evaporating any units trying to move around. And those city-destroying comets? Oh, you don't want to know how many are on their way. So can I, the spiffing Brit, use all of my dastardly British cheese strats and exploits to survive in the most hostile Civ world that has ever been created? Grab yourself a nice warm cup of Yorkshire tea. Get comfortable, and if you're feeling especially jazzy, you legally must now like the video. Let's begin. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Spiff from the future interrupting this video as I would like you all to make a prediction. That's right, you need to predict who's going to win. Now you don't know who the six civs in this world are just yet, but I want you to try and see who you think is going to win. Do you think I, the mighty Korea, will win? Or do you think it'll be the Huns with Genghis Khan, the Ottomans led by Suleiman the Magnificent, Dido leading the Greeks, potentially it's China, or maybe it's Indonesia. Place your bets ladies and gentlemen gentlemen, because the result is probably going to surprise you. Anyway, back to the video. We've got an apocalypse to witness. Here we are, the craziest game of Civ 6 is about to begin, and due to the nature of the world that we're playing in, all of the uh, leaders are randomized, and we've randomly rolled uh, the Korean Empire, which is arguably one of the strongest civs in the entirety of Civ 6, so naturally you might be thinking, well, you're off to a cracking start already, uh, this game should be a walk in the park. However, no. Welcome to Crazy Giga Civ, uh, where the entire world's about to end. So what we're going to do is settle down our first lovely city in the woods. And so we're going to found our first ever glorious city of Spiftopia. Now, immediately whilst I'm in this menu, you might notice that, um, yes, the entire map appears to have inland tiles that will flood when the sea level rises. That's because, yes, they will. This entire world is going to end, ladies and gentlemen, and there is no stopping it. Now, already we've headed into a climate level of one. However, we're not going to get into any issues until we get to climate four phase two. When we reach that point, uh, the sea levels are going to start rising, and then this entire area here is going to flood, because it's in a very dangerous spot. Oh, we've met none other than the lovely Kublai Khan. Hello there, you lovely sausage. You are playing, of course, as China today, and you're not too far away from me. This entire map is rather small, so we will be getting very, very close and friendly with the AI. Oh, and we found another civilization. Who's this? Wait, hang on a second, it's Mongolia. Oh, no, it's Genghis Khan. Great. Um... This is a bit of a problem. We've got two rather war-orientated civs uh, that are going to start disliking us if we don't have a strong military. Luckily for us, we have a relatively strong military. And oh my goodness, we are so close to the sea. This is a problem. Oh, the first great flood has also occurred. It devastated 60 tiles! 60 tiles! What? That's like a quarter of the entire map. Oh my goodness, I have made a problem. I made a really big problem. Oh no. Now, because of the way I also have the mod set up, if tiles are affected by a disaster and, you know, the city actually survives, there are temporary bonus resources there that last for a handful of turns. It's nothing too game-breaking, but um, it is a benefit. And oh my, what? A meteor just landed. Oh my lord, it just, look, what is all of this? Okay, a builder was just murdered. An unknown city survived with no population lost. Fantastic. But the city center took 76 damage. Oh my goodness. Okay, so um, a meteor just landed here and hit so many things. Things. Good lord, that's actually insane. But hey, at least um, some resources arrive, even though the world is now on fire. Oh my goodness, I lost my warrior. What did I lose my warrior to? Five fires began. Five fires. Oh my goodness, the world is on fire. Oh, all it takes is a single forest fire, and because this entire map is comprised of forests, yes, the entire thing goes up in flames. Okay, right, I'm going to uh, have to spend a whole bunch of gold to buy myself a warrior. Uh, it's just necessary in order to actually survive. Now, the AI is being relatively friendly. They're sending things like delegations our way, which is very, very nice indeed. However, I am still absolutely terrified of them. And great, another scout just spotted us. Lovely. That's exactly what I needed. More scouts. Oh no, and an earthquake just happened. An earthquake? No, my slingers! <laughs> oh my goodness, 127 tiles have been devastated. Okay, so the earthquake hit. Luckily, it just missed my city. Just. However, my warrior is almost dead, and my slinger is almost dead. And I hope that these tiles aren't going to set 
on fire. I'm noticing there's actually a fire spreading our way as well. Yes, the fire that started over here is now walking itself this way, and it is only a few tiles away from us. Okay, we need to run. We actually need to run from the fire. Potentially the apocalypse is nearly upon us, and a new barbarian capture spawned next to me! And the fires began as well. A new wildfire. Oh my goodness, Beijing as a city has almost fallen to the apocalypse. And now a tornado outbreak has occurred. Great, a tornado outbreak. Well, we needed one of those. That was exactly what we were missing in this, uh, in this life. Well, I need to make my way to the center of the map where it is as safe as possible. So my warrior and my settler are going to start waltzing their way over there. I'll also buy myself an additional warrior to escort because, oh, that's where the tornado outbreak is. Oh, it's right next to my settler that I just spent like 10 turns building. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Where's my settler gone? No! <laughs> he died in the forest fire. Oh my. <sighs> This game, this game is, it's horrible. I've i have really made a monster. Um, honestly, new plan. Uh, I think it's gonna be quite hard to settle the center of the map. So new plan is to wait for a natural disaster to affect, I don't know, China, and then just steal their city. I think that's going to be the most efficient way of handling things. Okay, I'm going to actually improve a tile. Um, I don't really know if it's going to actually help us in the long run. I think it's entirely possible the answer is no. One advantage I have noticed, however, is is the fact that the barbarian camps keep dying to natural disasters and so consequently keep respawning, which in turn allows me to rehire units from them. So what I'm going to do is effectively warrior rush the Chinese capital uh, because they don't have an active military at the moment. Oh, and China loves a leader who's surrounded by an impressive military. Well, thank you, China. Said impressive military is currently on their way to murder you. Oh, you have a builder who's about to improve a tile. Um, no, I think I would like that, actually, China. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, wow, yes, a, a forest fire is occurring near Beijing. Okay, this is a good thing, but also potentially a bad thing. Our entire army might just get burnt out by a forest fire. However, there's a chance they survive, which would be good. We would like that. Oh my goodness, the forest fire just spread to a tile that I was standing on. This is annoying game. Can you not spread the forest fire so aggressively on my own units? Oh, we're going to lose all of them, aren't we? Okay, this one unit that isn't stood on a forest tile is going to be able to survive but all other units are going to die. Great. There we go. There goes an entire unit of mine to a forest fire. Lovely. Okay, I've lost two of my lovely warriors. Uh, they were burnt in a giant forest fire, so I've had to hire an additional warrior to help. But hey, Beijing is going to hopefully eventually become ours. Oh no, Beijing archer. Oh dear. Right, okay, that's it. Beijing, uh, the war was great. Thank you for the builder. Wait, where's my It burnt in the flames! <sighs> Ah, game, why? Why? Where? I loved my builder. Right, Beijing, uh, I think we just make peace, right? Uh, it's profitable for all sides, yeah. This war was never going to go anywhere beneficial uh, after my entire military force just got burnt in a forest fire. Wonderful. Well, my city is back down to one population again because everyone keeps dying in forest fires. I mean, come on, guys. It's pretty clear. If the world is on fire, do not go into the fire. Jeez. But hey, next turn we actually get to do a hero dedication. Okay, we got a hero who can potentially do combat damage, which means there is a chance we can capture a city with her. But hey, we've managed to build ourselves our lovely science district. So we're now getting seven science per turn. This is wonderful. I'm also going to try and get a builder constructed as fast as possible because I want to tear down all of the forests around my capital city. Oh, what? Wildfire? There's no, there's no forests on these tiles. It killed my warrior! No! Oh, <laughs> this game! Oh my goodness, this is a nightmare. Right, we're just gonna tear down this forest here. And we do need a settler, realistically speaking, because I need to settle this inner area. So bam, settler out, let's go. No! What? I moved my builder onto this tile, which clearly looks like all of the trees have burnt on it. It's burnt woods, and no, apparently burnt woods can just be set on fire again instantly. This world is killing me. <laughs> and I can't build a settler unit. I was trying to think, oh, why can't I build a settler unit? It's because you need at least two population. Good luck trying to get two population in this nightmare world. Right, fine, we're doing heroic tales. I need to find a hero that can somehow, I don't know, just give me a way out of this. I need a hero that can solve my problems. Okay, we found Beowulf. Um, he's okay. Not exactly the best. I will say that Ouya is potentially going to be good due to the fact that they ignore all movement limitations. There we go, bam. We've got ourselves a hero who can move through the forest fires. So let's just play this very safe and carefully 
carefully to make sure we don't accidentally step her into a forest fire. Like someone built a Wanda. Genghis Khan built the Oracle. Genghis, I have questions. How and why is your city not just on fire at the moment? And wait, Beijing's capital city is going to rebel in 14 turns. This is their only city. How can your capital city rebel in this game? What has happened? <laughs> I'm going to personally uh, try and kill China again. Uh, we'll see how this goes. Luckily, I can just walk into their city and probably murder it using my hero. Yes, my hero is horrifically overpowered. And there's a forest fire on the way. Ah, game. You wouldn't. You wouldn't do that, would you? Right, well, we have to try. We have to try and take Beijing. I need to control a city. And the fires are spreading. The fires are spreading. I can see them. Oh, yep. Do a big heal. Damage the city. And we need to get ourselves onto this uh, lovely farmland tile because the farmland tile can't set on fire, I think. Hopefully. And let's take Beijing. Yes. Oh, we did it. We actually took a city. Okay, Beijing does have a second city, but who cares? I have their capital city. Oh my goodness. Keep it. Yes, keep it. It's not a good city, but it doesn't matter. There's actual progress in the game, ladies and gentlemen. And there's a site of large disaster. I mean, this entire map is a site of large disaster game. What are you on about? Okay, and I'm now going to head towards reinforced materials on Liang. Uh, we're likely not going to get there for a little while yet. Not for another six turns, but as soon as we have that, there's a chance we can survive the apocalypse. And the great wildfire has spread. Okay, the entire city of Beijing is now engulfed in flames. That's wonderful. That's exactly what I was looking for. Thank you, game. Thank you, game. Oh, looks like the AI actually wants uh, to tango over the capital city that we stole from them. Uh, issue for them, however, is that I've just built walls now, and walls are going to definitely be enough to cause some chaos, like, say, stealing a settler. No, we almost did it. Oh, my hero is really low health. Okay, there's a chance uh, my lovely settler dies here, but that's fine. I'm also going to be tearing down all of the woods in this area. Tear down more woods. I want you to build a archer, and I'm going to chop the entire thing out. There we go. Lovely. Oh, they didn't kill my hero, and their lovely archer just got murdered by a tornado, which means I can just walk on in, capture a settler. We've just got a free settler. <gasps> we could get a fourth, fourth city down. A fourth city in this game mode. It's completely unheard of. Also, because no one's ever played this game mode before. But still, I've done something. All right, fantastic. We're cutting down loads of trees in the vicinity of our capital city, which is really, really good. Also, starting to get an economy online, which allows us to buy up some tiles, which is very nice indeed. Wow, our new defensive setup against the Chinese is phenomenal. They can't even get any units close to us. This is a very, very good thing indeed. Okay, I've got a new city formed. This city is going to be kind of like a flame city, is how I'm going to describe it. We're not going to destroy any of the tiles around it. So my logic is that effectively fires will continue to spawn in it, and eventually the city itself will become incredibly valuable and the yields will be really high. Because if we get rid of the trees nice and early, we don't get to keep the permanent yields that the fires have provided. Whereas if we chop them later on, we do get to keep those amazing yields, and they are spicy. Oh no, a great fire just occurred. Well, it's a good thing I got that settler down last turn, because if I didn't, it would have died, and uh, one of my warriors who was outside of my city did. And even some of my units that are inside one of my cities are now almost dead. Why is the fire able to reach inside of my lands? This is annoying. This is highly annoying. <laughs> Oh well, alas, not much I could do to defraud it, uh, beyond just try and flee my builder away. Well, a hero has sadly died due to old age, but that is fine because they've given us a hero relic, and that hero relic uh, is beneficial to us. Very, very beneficial indeed. We do need to also immediately repair the entirety of our city, and oh, hang on a second, Liang, you have reinforced materials. The city's improvements, buildings, and districts cannot be damaged by environmental effects. Well, um, Liang, I don't think that's important improved materials because this city is still clearly on fire. What were your improved materials? Slightly thicker twigs? Anyway, I've built a uh, actual wander, which is kind of insane, and my capital city is up to seven population, which is really, really, really good. And, oh my goodness, right, there we go. Uh, that's that giant wildfire tamed for just a little while. Lovely stuff. And we can set up a trade route. Right, we're going to set it up with Beijing. Um, good luck if it honestly arrives. Uh, place your bets in the comment section 
action now if you believe this trader will reach it to here and back safely. Oh, we've met the Ottomans. Okay, that's a new civilization to make friends with. And what just happened over here? It looks like a um an earthquake occurred. Oh my goodness, a giant earthquake occurred. That's quite a bad one. Um, their city's down to full population. It was a lot higher not too long ago. I wonder where all the people went. I guess we'll never know. Anyway, I will harvest this lovely large disaster plot for a huge amount of culture and science. That is wonderful. I'm also going to be beelining my way to a few very key magical things. Namely, this lovely release CO2 project. What it does is it allows me to deliberately release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And my logic is that if I can speed up climate change and then beeline to the flood barrier, I could be the last civilization standing. So yes, that's exactly what we're aiming for. Oh my goodness, I think the trader might actually make it to its destination. It's almost made half of the journey. They said it wasn't possible. They said science couldn't do it. And yet here we are. It's looking like we might actually get a trader reach its destination. This is insane. Oh no, no, the barbarian archer has arrived. No. Okay, right. We need to kill that archer that's trying to uh, steal my lovely trader. Trader must make it. Go trader. Be free. Oh my, what the heck was a meteor? No. <laughs> oh my god. What the heck was that? Look at all of this damage. Look at all of this damage that just came through. My entire empire just got hit by a meteor. That is insane. Okay, right. We have to queue up a, a whole bunch of repairs. Um, Repair this. This game is insane. Oh, well, uh, we are surviving. Ish. Emphasis on the ish. But I've noticed that the city of Xi'an belonging to China is about to rebel. And this is their last remaining city. So logically, if I'm able to take it, then I think we have ourselves an advantage. <gasps> yes, I think China just lost. Uh, their city rebelled. Xi'an is a free city state. Wonderful, right? Well, the lovely Beowulf and uh, my hero here are going to uh, be borrowing this free independent city state. Lovely. Right, now back to rushing uh, our way towards the flood barriers. We need to get there as fast as possible. And the trader did make it all the way to my city and back again. This is a Christmas miracle, ladies and gentlemen. Also, I think I'm going to murder the Indonesian Empire. Not because they've necessarily done anything wrong, but more because, you know, you might as well. Also, not many people particularly like them, so uh, they've got to die. It's as simple as that. Nothing personal, guys. Just gonna take that city over a bit and just walk over towards your capital and, you know, set it on fire. <gasps> Why is my empire on fire? <sighs> I just lost my two heroes, didn't I? Yeah, I did. I just lost both of my two heroes. We're still on climate phase number one, ladies and gents. This is climate phase number one. Like, how are you meant to survive this? Oh my goodness, I've just realized something amazing. Uh, because the giant forest fire occurred and destroyed literally everything, uh, it also destroyed the walls of Majahapit, leaving the city relatively undefended. So we can just sweep on in and next turn, we should have the city. Like, they can't out heal us. Oh, this is fantastic. This is fantastic. They can try and shoot all the boats down, but I should be able to do just enough damage to sneak my way in. Come on. There we go. We do one hit with this boat. Get it down. It's mine. Oh, we did it. The city of Majahapit is mine. Yes, glorious cheese victory. Yes, all it took for us to do it was uh, the coming of a giant ecological apocalypse. Perfectly balanced, easy, anyone can do it, no problemo. Oh, and there was an earthquake. Oh no, that's a big earthquake. That's a huge earthquake. 127 tiles that thing just affected. Um, where's my empire? Why is it all so dusty? <laughs> oh no. Oh my gosh, that's gonna take so long to repair. Oh, at least we got rid of the walls of, I guess, the major city that we're attacking. But like, come on, that's just way too much. Anyway, the city's ours. The Indonesian Empire still apparently has more cities than this. I mean, good on them. I, can we like peace out? Because I'm I'm done here. All right, there we go. We get peace. Lovely. Everyone's happy. Now we just need to get our way to those flood barriers as soon as possible because we have just started to unlock the ability to industrialize, ladies and 
gentlemen. And with that comes our ability to burn coal out of thin air, which as you can imagine, is not exactly a good thing for the environment. Okay, we just had a giant wildfire rock the center of our empire, and then it was immediately followed up by an additional wildfire hitting another point of our empire. Literally, there is nothing I can do to stop the wildfires from spreading. There is just an endless quantity of fire engulfing my empire constantly. Actually, wait, no, I do realize there is a way we can circumnavigate it. Yes, it makes perfect sense. You see, we're now going to be able to start generating coal, like a lot of coal. And coal is quite a fun resource. It's fun for one key reason. Uh, we can burn coal, and then in burning coal, we can kill the environment. Now, this might not sound like a good idea, and that's because it's not. However, it is an idea, and so we're going to do it. Okay, fantastic. And after building an industrial site in our capital city, we're not able to start releasing emissions into the atmosphere. So as we have such a huge stockpile of coal, uh, we're now going to have our capital release 100 emissions into the environment every turn. This is to an extent slightly suicidal. However, actually, is it a good idea? No, it's definitely not a good idea. Okay, I take that back. We haven't got flood defenses up yet. We just can't pull that off. If we did it, uh, that would be the end of the game. So instead, yes, we have to beeline our science as hard as we can and research the ability to dodge all of this. Six and a half hours later. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is 1280 AD and we have started construction on the giant flood barrier that is going to encompass our entire side of the island. That's right, the flood barrier is under construction. We are definitely ahead of the AI in terms of technologies and even though the AI is doing everything within their power to cause as many forest fires on my border, they are luckily ever so slightly not quite able to reach us. So it's going to take us about 20 turns to get all of these flood barriers online, which is a little bit slower than I want, but oh well, what can you do? And oh no, the forest fire is actually spreading to our own terrain. Oh my goodness. Oh, and there was also a mass wildfire in their empire. Okay, well, we need to flee our units away from the front line now. Oh my goodness, the entire world, it just sets on fire so easily. Right, I think it's important we check on the world's climate just to see where we currently are. And yes, it does indeed appear to be that actually Dido is contributing the most CO2 into the climate. Yes, that's not my fault. It's Dido's fault. Evidently, Dido has somehow started burning coal in their empire, which is uh, fine. They can start the industrialization process. However, we are going to be the ones to finish it once and for all when the Great Flood hits. Now, I am positioning uh, my units in what I can only describe as observation of the end of the world. As I've built these giant lovely walls that are going to help us hopefully survive the end of the world. And so now it's time for me to start destroying the world. And of course, the best way to do this is to build industrial zones and start pumping CO2 into the atmosphere. And so that's exactly what I'm going to do. So there we go. Sangju has built itself a workshop so we can now begin our scheduled burning of the coal. There we go. We're going to increase our emissions output massively. Hopefully uh, this doesn't cause an instantaneous flood because if it does then, uh, well, our capital city is going underwater, but that's okay. And there we go. We've just massively overtaken the Korean Empire and pumped out 120 CO2 contributions. Lovely stuff. Let's continue burning that oil, baby. Anyway, another turn of pumping stuff into the skies. Lovely stuff. A first little bit of a natural flood and the flood barriers to the north are looking glorious and constructed. We're just a handful of turns away from everywhere having a nice tasty flood barrier. Let's get building some water parks. If the world's gonna flood, we need to start getting used to water parks. And while the climate change has accelerated a bit from the last turn, it's no longer going to take 130 turns for the sea level to rise. Uh, it's going to take four. <laughs> oh no. This genuinely could be the turn right now that we accidentally destroy the planet. Oh my goodness. Uh, and it's begun. It has begun. Oh my goodness, it's begun. Oh no, one of our cities didn't have the walls built in time. No. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Um, this city to the south, Matram, uh, it's it's gone. Uh, it's under the water. So is Beijing. Beijing's gone. Uh, yes, if we'd waited one turn, they would have survived. However, uh, no. All that matters is that we made it. The most important people. Well, so far, guys, this is going great. We are now losing 357 gold, but um, it's it's fine. We don't need money. Oh, dear. The entire Phoenician Empire is just... It's under the sea. It really is just under the sea. We're losing 434 gold to cities. Oh, it's the flood barriers. The flood barriers cost money to maintain, don't they? Oh, dear. Well, that's fine. We're just not going to have any more 
money. Uh, we've accepted this. It's just the way it has to be. In the meantime, I have to keep pumping out as much CO2 as possible in all of my lovely cities. Now, how close are we to the next climate crisis? Okay, one more turn until the sea levels almost rise again. Uh, we're getting nice and close now, nice and spicy. If we take a look at our CO2 contributions, yep, we're up to 1,269. Ah, quite good. Up oh, and the industrial era has hit. And is that another great flood? I think that is, isn't it? Oh, no, we got five more turns until the uh, sea levels rise once more. Uh, now, of course, for poor Beijing, uh, they are struggling. They're at minus 48 amenities. Um, not much I can do to really rectify that situation. At least I can get open borders with uh, the Ottomans, which allows me to sail into their empire, which is now, you know, mostly underwater. <laughs> oh, dear. What? Category 5 hurricane. Oh, no. Where are you? Where are you? Oh, you are just off my border. Uh, please, look. Beijing's trying to build the wall because the Yellow River has become the Yellow Sea. Uh, so please don't head our way. Head into the ocean. That would be lovely. That's not into the ocean. That's actually closer towards us, giant hurricane. It would be great if you could listen or just speak English. It would be wonderful. I think the ocean's flooding next turn, isn't it? Two more turns. Two more turns. Oh, dear. Oh, is this another flood? Yep, another great flood has just occurred. Um, well, these tiles are now actually underwater. They are just completely gone. Uh, I think, is this the max flood level now? No, we can actually go up to plus 35 meters. Okay, let's go. We're almost there. Let's see how these uh, Greek cities are looking. Oh, they're looking fantastic. Yes, good. Right, release more gases into the atmosphere. Let's go see the island nations that we've created. Wow, this is great. Oh, it's wonderful. Isn't it wonderful that the world loves the fact that I've done this? Everyone's just like, yeah, you know what? We didn't want the land anyway. The land sucked. Waterworld is so much cooler. Let's all just enjoy Waterworld. And it's gone again. Beijing's an island now. <laughs> What the heck is this? Well, I think this is it, ladies and gentlemen. Turn 239, and it is time for I, a dastardly evil British person, to maniacally plunge the world under the sea. Um, now, I'm not too sure what happens now, except that man's getting crushed to death. <laughs> oh my gosh, no. An asteroid has plummeted into the planet, and it has uh, killed those tiles. And the Panama Canal's been constructed whilst the world's on fire. <laughs> I don't think this is a safe work environment, ladies and gentlemen. This isn't very good at all. Oh, well, uh, we built our first ever actual natural wonder. It's immediately on fire. That's great. Let's see if we can build any more natural wonders before the world dies. And oh, no, another comet strike is landing next to the Panama Canal. No, Panama Canal, please. Oh, is that an entire city destroyed? Oh, dear. Uh, oh, no, the Panama Canal's gone, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's just Panama. It's It's been cut in half. What a shame. Um... Well, this is fine. I mean, I have noticed that of the two comets that have landed, they've both targeted me. That's not very nice, game. Could you please throw the world-ending comets at, you know, anyone else? There's another one. Well, there goes one city entirely, I think. Yep, it's gone now. Goodbye, city. It's just been evaporated. This is the end of the world. And here I thought my giant flood wall costing me 780 would be enough. Oh, no, there goes another enemy city. Uh, goodbye, Fiat Ocean City. That's just straight into the ocean. Bam. Goodbye. But hey, Spiftopia still stands. As long as Spiftopia stands, that's all that matters. Another one of our cities has just been removed from the map. No. Goodbye, city. Oh, there goes one of my cities. No. The beautiful island city. Oh, rest in peace. You are gone. Oh, here comes another big comet strike. No, right onto my coal mine. Goodbye, coal mine. Rest in peace. Coal mine is gone. I can only target my own cities. Uh, protect the cities from comets, please, if that's something you can do. <gasps> We've got the Eiffel Tower's just finished construction. Construction, which is great because it's just finished construction next to a giant comet bombardment. Lovely. Look, there's the tip of it. It made it. Well done, Eiffel Tower. The continent has now been split in half. Wonderful. But hey, tower's up. Isn't that good? Now let's build the Kilwa Kisawadi and Christ the Redeemer. Lovely. Let's get all of these wonderful wonders actually constructed. There's even an opportunity to settle a new city over here. Um, although there's a giant comet that's just come down. May prosperity come to your cities, the ones away from the coast. Uh, uh, Dido, that's a little bit hurtful 
considering that a city did just get removed by a comet. And I swear if you go and settle on that land, I'm going to be immense, <gasps> immensely upset. That's another city gone. How many cities am I down to? One, two, three, four. I'm down to four cities. The AI has more than me. Game? What the heck? I mean, I know that I didn't have to end the world and I chose to, but like, what am I meant to do? Not kill everyone? That's just the British way. I right, bam, I built a new city. Seoul has been constructed. Lovely. This will distract the uh, comet AI, hopefully, and they will choose to ignore my wonderful safe happy lands and not bomb them into the ground. Oh, here comes the comet. No, not Spiftopia. Please don't hit Spiftopia. Please don't hit Spi- <sighs> Gosh, Sid Myers, my capital city has gone. What? How am I meant to win a? I'm no no longer winning, leading a domination victory because all of the capital cities of the other empires that I've captured have been evaporated by a space rock. Thanks, game. Oh no, another one, another one. No, this was a good city. This was a good city. Look, they're in a water park. The children, they were on the Ferris wheel game. Oh dear. Right. Well, that's several billion people evaporated with our, the settling of our new city we are down to just four uh this is not a great sign for our glorious empire not at all oh no here comes a new one. Oh dear goodbye glorious city rest in peace down to three but hey we're now making money which means our cities can grow isn't that the solution we were looking for i think it is oh the christ the redeemer was just built look and the eiffel tower was just dismantled <laughs> no no i literally just was about to finish building this oh well hey at least the city lives so um does Christ the Redeemer still get built in this scenario? Yes, it does. Look, on a brand new lakefront. I wonder where all of the water came from. I love this game. Oh, I really do. This has been like the most cursed game of Civ. It's wonderful. It truly is. Here comes another one. Goodbye, elephants. Dumbo's not going to be able to fly away from that one. Rest in peace. Oh, no, 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 my glory city. Don't, please don't, please don't kill it. I've built two wonders here. Two what? It's gone. It's gone. We're down to one city. One city. City, ladies and gentlemen. Seal. Um, got to be honest, it's it's not looking the best for us over here in the city of Seoul. Uh, it's it's not our strongest city at all. In fact, it's a city we settled maybe five milliseconds ago because I just wanted to put a settler down. And maybe it survives this world, maybe it doesn't. But th there's no real easy way to know what the outcome's going to be. Maybe we do make it in this universe. That's what I hope for. All right, Granary, get it built, come on. Let's get this city up and running. I'm not going to let the city of Seoul fall. The entire world might, but Seoul will stand tall. Let there be a harbor. Yes, a harbor to make money. Yes, we're going to build a harbor. This will make us money. Glorious profits. The industrial era is about to end, but it doesn't matter. We are going to make it, ladies and gentlemen. One way or another, the world will not be able to oust me. We just need to be the last Civ standing. Look, this AI has two cities. Dido has six cities. I just need to be the last city standing and if that happens then we we've probably won the civ a defeat what happened the ottoman empire won a domination victory just one more turn how how did the ottoman empire win a domination victory oh it's because every other civilization lost their capital i see because istanbul was never hit by a giant death comet and everyone else's was uh they managed to win the game uh, for one turn <laughs> and then goodbye istanbul well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a wonderful game of Apocalypse Civ. It's a very, very cursed way of playing the game. And honestly, I think I'd really like to pull off maybe a multiplayer game of this. Maybe it's a live stream. I think it would be a good laugh. So if that's something you want to see, hop on down to the comment section and let me know. Because I think it would be a good laugh to watch friends absolutely get evaporated by nightmare disasters. Of course, a massive thank you to each and every one of you lovely sausages who have liked today's video and also left a comment. Seriously, it massively helps us out. And heck, also to all of you lovely jazz people who subscribed. Aren't you just majestic, wonderful sausages? And of course, a massive thank you to each and every one of you amazing, lovely YouTube members and patrons whose generous funding allows us to do these very, very silly and cheeky things. So thank you very much. And hey, if you sat there wondering what video to watch next, look no further than this one on screen now, hand chosen by myself to be absolutely perfect for you. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have a lovely day and goodbye for now.